Hey y'all, hi. Today I am just gonna be doing my eye makeup with you using what I called the Perfect Fall Palette. This is a little palette that I built in an overhead video a couple of weeks ago. And so many of you in the comments said that you wanted to see me use this on my eyes. I have been using it a lot since then. It's great. And so I thought I would just take some time today to sit down and make use of it in the kind of casual, simple, not too effortful way that I have been. At least I think that that's what I'm gonna do. I mean, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what I end up with. If you haven't seen that video and you think that you would enjoy watching me kind of make all of my decisions about what to include in this palette and why before watching me put it on my eyes, then click through and watch that video first. I'll put it in the cards. I'll put it in the description box down below. But I know that a lot of you have already seen that video. If this happens to be your first time to my channel, then uh, welcome. I'm so glad you clicked on this video. I'm Hannah. I really enjoy makeup. I do review some new makeup, but I also like to make videos where I'm making use of makeup that I've had for a long time. So using my old makeup to do what might feel new to me. This is like a current trends inspired or like a fall makeup inspired palette that I built myself. If you like that and you enjoy this, I hope you'll subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. I prepped for this video in a Patreon video. I actually filmed myself applying this base makeup, this cheek and this lip and doing my brows and just talking about things I've been thinking about and things that have been going on in my life. I'll link my Patreon down below too in case you want to become a patron. You can join my Patreon for as little as $1 a month and get a couple of extra videos every month. But the reason I'm bringing it up is that this is kind of an unusual lip. I feel like there are already going to be some of you who based on the intro were like in the comments being like, what's on your lip? what's on your lips. And I forgot to bring lip products down here when I was prepping, when I was like bringing my makeup down to film. So I just used what I had. I didn't want it too vampy of a lip. I wanted something kind of pale and neutral. And I had this Thrive lip liner in the shade Khaki, the collab with Khaki Reviews Beauty. So I put it all over my lips and then I mixed in a little bit of this Patrick Ta Balm foundation that I reviewed like last month. It's in the shade Fair Too and I just have it kicking around. I mixed quite a lot of it in with a lip liner on my lips and this is the result. I'm pretty into it and it has set in sort of a liquid lipsticky kind of way, probably because this isn't supposed to be used on the lips. But because it's a balm foundation that doesn't fully set, it's stayed emollient enough to be wearable. Okay, I'm gonna make a play plan for the eye look and then I'm going to zoom you way in so you can really, really see what I'm doing. And the question of the video is, will I stick to the plan? <laughs> we'll see. The best laid plans, you know? Here's a close-up of the palette. You can really see those multi-chromes shifting and like, living their best lives. Oh my goodness. I feel compelled for some reason to use the glitter today. I almost always start with the multi-chrome. I think today I'm going to start with Kiln, which is this one right here. The this one, but I'm gonna kind of go light with kiln. I think what I want to do is to put a light layer of kiln on my lids with my fingers and then blend out with a brush and kind of use the black base in that multi-chrome, kind of take advantage of the fact that it has a sort of smoky base to blend out and get sort of a, a smoky grungy transition shade from that multi-chrome, but without necessarily trying to build too much of that like hyper reflective color shifting quality onto the lids. It's more just like using the multi-chrome as a base, basically. They're such great, versatile eyeshadows for me. And then let us lean into the purple a little bit. So I'm gonna go for the most purple of the mattes, which is this one. This is a Viseart shadow. I'm gonna use that as the outer corner shade. And I'm gonna try to put enough of that matte in the outer corner that I'm using it to deepen the outer corner and create structure, but I'm also causing it to be a look that one would consider to be a purple look. Probably a grungy purple, but purple nonetheless. And then and from there, I'll use the glitter. And I don't know, maybe I'll put it in the center of the lid and really just kind of light up the lid. Okay, that's the plan. I'm gonna zoom you in and get started and uh, I'll follow my future career with great interest. Okay, so starting with the multi-chrome kiln. Oh, I haven't primed my eyes. I'm so glad I remembered that was a close call. to get roughly the same shape on each lid. And I'm not worrying too much about the outer corners because I know I'm going to be using the purple there. I'm also going above the crease because I have hooded eyes, above the crease in the center. Now blending it out. I'm gonna 
smudge some of the same multi-chrome onto my lower lash line. I love this shadow on the lower lash line. I love how it looks like I used multiple eyeshadows, but it was really just this one. I'm going back to this tiny fluffy brush and going into the purple. This is a bigger brush. I just need to soften this edge. isn't as purple as I was hoping it would be. So I'm gonna use a purple waterline liner to try to bring more purple to the look. All right, still a pretty smoky purple, but I think that helped a lot. And now for the glitter. You can see that I'm keeping the glitter to the center of the lids, but I'm applying it quite high up in a column, almost all the way up to my brows. I'm gonna use this little sample of Rare Beauty mascara that I have. some close-up footage so you can really see what it looks like close up but I feel like what really matters is kind of how it looks from this distance you know what I mean like the impact of the entire thing together which now that we've backed up you can kind of see that taking the smoky purple kind of far out sort of out towards the tail of my brows and even up a little bit it's given my entire eye area this kind of like whoosh, sort of like swept up in a way sense of movement there's this drama of sort of smoke and glitter that that's poofing upwards from the eyes. And I think at close range, the textures are really gratifying, but it's a little bit harder to see that. It's instructive, I feel like, to do something really close up and then kind of back up from it and see what the overall effect is. It's like shape creates movement. You know what I mean? And the other takeaway from this, I haven't talked about this on camera in a long time, but if you've been watching me for a long time, you'll have heard me say it a lot before. There's so much eyeshadow above my crease, and that is because of my hooded eye. I could have done this same look with all of the same eyeshadow, the glitter, all of the drama, putting it all basically in the same place with relation to itself. But if I had kept it in the crease and below, like on my lid, you'd be looking at me and my eyes just wouldn't have this sense of expansiveness and drama and movement. And you wouldn't really be able to see any of the colors and textures when I'm looking at you head on. Because when my eyes are open, my entire eyelid disappears back into the hood. And all you can see is the makeup that's between my brows and my crease, like on my brow bone. So if you have hooded eyes, then that's something to remember. I'm really pleased with this and I'm remembering now that when I built this palette, I was loosely duping the vibes of the Natasha Denona My Dream collection and the Huda Beauty Empowered palette. I do feel like this makeup look is the kind of look you might see in promo imagery for those palettes, right? It's definitely those vibes. I'm really happy that I was able to do it with what I have. To me, this is the perfect dramatic fall makeup look that's grounded in purple and old gold. And I actually do think that the purple is coming across a little bit better than I expected it to. It's just, it's kind of a smoky, plummy, eggplant purple rather than being a bright, strong purple, but that's the purple that's in all of those palettes anyway. Like, that's the trend. What fun! This was really, really fun. It makes me want to do this kind of thing more often. Let me know if there's something else you'd like to see me do, either with this palette or with my other eyeshadows. A look like this. If you, if 
you'd like to see me demonstrate something at close range and then back up and sort of talk about the theory and talk about the te techniques and stuff like that, let me know because at least at this moment sitting here, I'm raring to go. I would like to produce more content like this. Thank you. Thank you for spending this time with me. If you do your own version of this look, please, please tag me on Instagram so that I can see it. I would love that. Don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Thank you.